Now we're actually going to start using this new dot product. Remember, we haven't used that yet in four dimensions, this weird version of four dimensions. But So everything we've done so far would, would work regardless of that. But now we're going to use this weird dot product where the, we get a sign switch whenever dx0, which we now know is dt, is involved, the time dimension. And remember, the definition of the star is supposed to be that alpha wedge star beta is the dot product, and now that's changed times dv. Now dv is still the same, and we're going to put them in order. The order does matter, remember. dx0, 1, 2, 3. So the dt is going to come first. Okay, so let's just figure out what these should be. I'm going to do a few of them by hand, and then I'll uh, steal them from below as usual. So star dx0 should be something where dx0 wedge with this is the dot product of dx0 with itself times dv. Okay, so that should be plus or minus, and we'll figure out the sign in a minute, dx1 wedge dx2 wedge dx3, just like before. It's just the plus or minus is different. And let's try, um, if it was uh, as before, it would be with a plus, but now it's going to be with a minus, because dx0 wedge this is definitely minus dv, and dx0 dot dx0, the, uh, the dot product is supposed to be negative. Okay, so that's an example. And then um, if we do look at like ds star dx1, well now the dot product of that with itself is still positive. We didn't flip anything else. So that's going to be very much like before. Um, this is where our sign convention is kind of nice. I claim it's minus dx0 wedge dx2 wedge dx3. That's the same sign. Um, and that's because, remember, I'm putting x0 first. Now the, the minus is because uh, dx1 would have to move 1 into in to get into here. Okay. Um, and then the rest of them, I'll just do these in C2 here. I won't, I won't import them. The rest of them, dx2, I claim it's still a minus as long as you do cyclic order 0 first and cyclic order on the other ones. And I claim they're all minuses with that convention. Let's check that real quick. These minuses are not from the weird dot product. It's just because I'm, I'm uh, artificially putting the 0 first in a way. The 2 has to flip through. Um, well, let's see. If you look at dx2 wedge this, it's 2, 0, 3, 1. And so the 2 has to switch with a 0 and with 3 and, no, no, no. Actually, first switch the 3 and the 1, and then switch the 2 with the 0 and the 1. So there's three switches. So you can check that these are actually all uh, minus, which is kind of nice. Okay. Now, what about star dx0 wedge dx1? Well, that's going to have the minus from the new dot product, and so it's going to be a little different from what we had before. At this point, I think I'm going to steal my list. Maybe not do any of these by hand. Okay. Um, so let's just talk about a couple. So dx0 wedge dx1 wedge dx2 wedge dx3, that's dv, but because this has a dx0 in it, the time variable, we put a negative in, even though they would be in the right order. Um, here, 2, 3, 0, 1, let's put a little thing, 2, 3, 0, 1, we want to get relate that to 0, 1, 2, 3. How many switches do we need? Don't have to worry about the, um, the minuses. So that's switching 0, 1, a pair with a pair, that's definitely an even number of switches, and so we get plus. Okay, and you can check the signs. So the signs are kind of nice. It's not all the same sign, but anything with a zero has a minus, and the ones without a zero don't have a minus. As long as we write the zeros first and the one, two, three in uh, cyclic order whenever they appear, um, more than one of them in the same expression. Okay, let me delete that because we don't really need it. And then star of this guy. Well, let's calculate that by hand. Again, you can always pause the video and do some of these yourself. That's the good way to learn it if you want. Now that should just be dx3 plus or minus. And this stuff, wedge this, would be dv, but it, this has a dx0 in it, so it's going to be minus. Okay. And in fact, they're all going to be minuses. Let me scoot down here and grab that one. Um, so let me just replace it. So in fact, they're all going to be minuses if we follow our convention of 0 first, and then uh, the other three in cyclic order. And then something that's not hard, oh yeah, down here, uh, star dv should be um, just, well, it's not going to be 1, it's going to be minus 1, because remember, this has a dx0 in it, and so that's going to be minus 1, and one thing that I didn't actually ask people to do in this is star 1, that's always dv, always, 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 because um, there's nothing here to screw up the dot product to be affected by any kind of sign switch. 
Okay, so now we've got a full explanation of what the star does. Very similar to before, just got to be even more careful with the signs. Okay, so now what that's useful for is we could do the star D star. We've seen the star D star is basically a divergence operator. Um, and it really literally is the divergence when we do it on a one form uh, that's the tilde of a vector field. Here, we're applying it to a two form. So it's going to be some sort of divergence. And if you think about physically, what would make the E and B fields diverge, especially the E field, diverging in some way? Well, that's going to be a charge. And it turns out when we do it in, the, in a two form way on space time, we, even though the B field doesn't literally have any divergence in space, there's sort of a kind of a divergence that, that happens, and you can think about what that would link to if you think about Maxwell's equations, and also if you think about the letter I'm using here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say, let's just have J right now be a name for star D star F. And it's a suggestive name, certainly. And we're just going to want to calculate that out. And then think about what is this j that we're calculating? Is there some physical meaning to that? But let's do it in stages. Star f is star of, here's f, I'll pull that down. OK, and now we just do that out. OK, so star dx not dx1, that's here. That turns into a minus dx2 dx3. So that's going to turn it into a plus e1 dx2 wedge dx3, and then this is going to change into a 1 and 3. So notice that everything with a time component is going to change into something without a time component. So the E's are going to go where the B's used to be. Similarly, these guys are going to switch with these guys. The B's are going to go where the E's are. So it's basically switching E with B, although we'll see that there's actually a minus sign involved. And let's go down here. Here's star F. So I'll just put a dot, dot, dot there and restart it. So here's what star f turns out to be. It's uh, e1, e2, e3 paired up with the space, and then plus b1, b2, b3. So the negative sign has disappeared. So it's really just um, take the b's and put them where the negative e's used to be, and take the, these negative e's and put them with a plus sign where the b's used to be. So it's switching b's with e's and a minus sign. If that sounds like a, if you recall, how do you um, take a vector in two dimensions? Just as an aside, if you take a vector AB a, in two dimensions and you replace that with uh, B comma minus A, you switch the roles and you put a minus sign in, that's a 90 degree rotation. And it's not literally a physical 90 degree, 90 degree rotation that's happening here, but it has definitely um, similarities to a, to a 90 degree rotation. And so this, this can be thought of as like a 90 degree, it's called a duality rotation. The star. Um, in addition to becoming star, it's also called the dual sometimes, the dual of f. Um, it's also called the Hodge dual or the Hodge star. OK, so that means that d star f is not really going to be a new calculation. So that's important. d star f, we're continuing, we're going to try and get star d star f. That's going to be exactly like the calculation we did up here of, oh wait, up here of df. I could just literally take this and switch the b's with e's and put in a negative sign, and we'd be fine. And that, if you think about Maxwell's equations, that might be a very interesting thing about. So here it is. I already pre-computed it. It's going to be a very similar expression. Now the space component part is the div of E. And the, when we have the time components, we're getting the time derivatives of the E vector field. And we're getting the, the three components of the curl of B. OK. Now we still need to star that to create a one form, which is a little bit more manageable. That's very easy. I'm going to put it back in place here. How do we do that? Well, since star of dx1, dx2, for example, is minus dx0, star of dx0, dx2, or dx3, minus dx1. So that's where these minus signs are coming from. OK. So that is j. That's what we're calling j. So what does that say if I look at the, the components? It says that j sub 0 is minus div e, when I think of that as good old-fashioned electric field vector. Hey, that is up to, don't need bold, that is up to um, factors of um, possibly epsilon naught, mu naught, all those constants, maybe some pi's or 4 pi's or something like that. I'm not going to worry about those. That's basically the um, 
the charge density. So that uh, minus. Okay. So once again, we're seeing that this time component corresponds to a, with a scalar. That's the scalar charge density. And then the vector, the rest of j, j1, j2, j3, I'm going to put those together. I'm going to put a comma in here. Oh, actually, I should say, uh, what, what am I sure? Let's, that's not a very good notation. D1, J1 dx1, and then J plus J2 dx2. The spatial part of that, that's a 3. That is just the tilde of a certain vector. Well, what is it the tilde of? Let's get something ready to take the tilde of. Well, that's this stuff. It's minus. Um, d e d t and I'll just go ahead and write it as a t and not as an x naught to make it look more like Maxwell's equations and then if you actually look carefully it's the minus and these minuses cancel out and it turns out to be a plus curl b so you take that vector you turn it into a one form that gives you the rest of it so well that is exactly Oops. That is exactly just the ordinary J vector. So if you've seen the differential form of Maxwell's equations, I don't really need that. Then you know that the current density, so here rho, let me go back, that's the um, charge density, that's a scalar, and J. is the current density. And the differential forms of Maxwell's equations say that curl B minus DEDT is equal to J. Um, and so what we're doing is putting these together. This is very much like what we've been doing in the whole rest of it. Putting together uh, here a scalar and a vector to become a four-dimensional vector, creating a one form out of that, and then Maxwell's equations just say that star d star f equals j. So you create a one form out of rho and j, uh, the vector j, and then ma the other, the inhomogeneous Maxwell's equations say star d, f, star d star f equals j, and combine that with df equals zero. That's all of electrodynamics in principle um, in two very, very simple equations. Now, we've hidden a lot of coordinate complexity in these equations. There's the minus signs, there's the star stuff, there's the d's. Um, so you could say we've just kind of hidden the complexity, but there's really good reasons for saying that this is a very, very good way to understand this. The d has such wonderful geometric properties. The fact that we're, we've been almost forced to combine time and again uh, time and space components, the, the rho and the j, the V and the A, the E and the B, to combine things into space-time. This says that space-time, to paraphrase spa uh, Sun Ra, space-time is the place. And it only worked, this, this one with the stars is really, really important with, to have that minus sign. If you try it without the minus sign, it will not work. If you just do it with a regular dot product and a regular star, this star D star F, is going to be something in terms of E and B, but it's not going to be the right thing to match up so nicely with uh, the current density and the charge density to give you Maxwell's equations in this wonderful form. So it's telling us that minus sign was crucial. What does that have to do with? Well, it has to do with the core foundations, the mathematical foundations of relativity, which is pretty cool. Good place to stop.